This is a follow-up video to Job 3.3. I'm a little calmer now because I hate stupidity so much, especially Christian stupidity, because when Christians act badly, it makes God look bad. So I'm going to go through this a little bit uh, again, but bring up other things so that if you are in an argument with a pro-lifer who brings up this verse, that you'll be able to point out, even in the English, things that make it uh, obvious that conception is not the right word. Okay? See, what, what's at issue here is that conception is being used here in these translations. Alright? That's not what hara means. Okay? It does have, it is used for people who are pregnant, but it's talking about bearing. Alright? You're expected to give birth. So we're going to do some obvious things here so that you can argue with them and say, well, see, it's not conception. The first obvious thing, and this is a little technical, and I apologize for that, is right here, the Latin, conceptus. All right? The Latin translated it as conceptus because the, the Vatican, actually there was no Vatican in those days, because they wanted to spread the lie that life begins at conception. The reason they spread that lie is they invented a lie about Mary being immaculate. They needed to say Mary was immaculate because they didn't know how to explain the virgin birth. And so they invented a lie that Mary was immaculate. And that's how come Christ could be immaculate. And they weren't thinking through how stupid that is to argue. Because if Mary's immaculate, then she's your savior instead of Christ. You see the point? It's really bad. Christ is the only sinless person in history. To call Mary immaculate is to say that Christ is not the only sinless person in history, and therefore she's your savior. Alright, and a lot of people treat her as a savior, even through now, but it was a big thing in the Middle Ages to treat her as a savior. Mer um, um, Miriam is really the right word in Hebrew. Theotakas, mother of God. Okay, well, if she's sinless herself, they're thinking, well, that's how come she could be the mother of God. They didn't understand the biology. But the ancients who wrote the Bible did understand it. There's no word for conception in Hebrew or Greek. And you can easily understand why. This is a lie. Because how do you know the moment of conception? You don't. A woman doesn't know when she's conceived. Okay? What she knows is that she misses her first period, her next period, and then the next one, and then something starts being very weighty in her, in her you know, uterus. And then she knows she's pregnant, but she couldn't tell you the exact moment of conception. Alright? So this is totally wrong. There is no word for it in the Hebrew or the Greek. Because there's no way to know when it actually happened. Okay? So this is flat wrong. And of course, knights don't say the moment of conception. And that's not what the word says. Alright? So what's happening here, and it should be obvious to you now. When they say conceived, conceived, conceived... They're looking at the Latin. They're not looking at the Greek and Hebrew. They're looking at politics. They're not looking at the Greek and Hebrew. They aren't translating according to moral standards of translation, which are that you should look at the item that you're translating from. They're not looking at the Hebrew and Greek. They're looking at the Latin. Because there's no word. Hara does not mean conceive. It was translated that way, and that's where this BS of conceive, progenitor, be conceived, that's where it's coming from. It's coming from the Latin. It's not coming from the Greek and Hebrew. Hara does not mean that. Hara means bear. About to bear. It does have a connotation of pregnancy. It does not have a connotation of conception. At all. Zero. That's the Latin. Right here. This is the Latin Vulgate. Okay, see? Vulgate. There are different Vulgates. 
but it's Latin that inserted that phrase. And so because it's old and because it's Latin, then some of the translators are looking at the Latin to come up with the word conceived. All right, but the translations that don't, see, they're all looking at the Latin because the Latin was the Bible that most people had that they could get a hold of for centuries. All right? Same thing here, the Geneva Bible. Because for centuries, that's what they had was the Latin. Okay? NAB is actually using the Hebrew. And it doesn't actually say the child is a boy. It just says boy. See, that's the word up here. Giver. And they're using a complementary term for man. Gaver, rather. The, with the expectation that when it grows up, it's going to be noble. See? Look. Wait, wait a minute. See? It's man, but it's got it's coming from the root of prevail, mighty, strength, be great. Okay? And give it ah, it's lady or queen, you know, the female version of it. So it's a complimentary term. Alright, and then the Hebrew and the Greek are saying the same things. See, look. Okay? A male. That's the Greek. See? It's not saying conceived. Now, I hope you understand this. The people who created the LXX are Jews who are translating from the Hebrew. If this had, if there was any connotation of conceived, they would have put it in there. But there is no such connotation. Alright? And you can tell that even from the, from the order. See, you got... The ones that aren't following the Latin don't use the word conceived. Brought forth, J.P.S. Tanakh, 1917. Child is a boy, a boy. Behold, a boy. N.A.B. They're looking at, they're looking at. Behold, that's Edu, a boy. They're looking at the Greek too. And this one says, brought forth, born, bear, born, a boy. Now, as I closed out the last video, and I'm sorry I was so upset while I was making it. As I closed out the last video, I brought to your attention certain obvious things that should, should be, you know, set. First word, Hebrew. Let be destroyed the day. Of birth. It's really my birth. Okay, when I was born, and this let be is wherein. See, the ba is the in, right there, and the o is third person singular suffix, as you can see in the lower window, and the sec the third person is the day. So let be destroyed the day. This is really important. The day of my birth in which I was born actually would be better to say let perish wo ya bod ya bad yom the day ulad ulad bo day of my birth of birth Wherein? So you want the day to have never existed. Now, day comes first. God said, let there be light. Sequence is real important here. The day is first. And birth is mentioned first. So let the day I was born perish. So we're talking about something that happens first the day he's born. Okay, and then Wahlela and the evening. Now, see, the evening comes after the day. It's second. It's real important. The second. Okay, and the day saying, that said, third person singular, Cal Perfect. Hara, Gever. 
that said, born a boy. And how do you know this only means born, never conceived? Because it's after. After. See, day, then night. After. The night follows after. So if it's already born, then this isn't conceived. Okay? This isn't conceived. It's after the birth has already happened. So this is Hara brought forth, bear. In other words, the child is born that day. So that means the labor pains were going on that day. So the bearing went on that day. He's mentioning the birth at the daytime. So the following evening of the same solar day cannot be talking about conception. Cannot be talking about conception. Because it's after the birth occurs. So it's talking about the labor pains of that day that brought forth. Bear brought forth. Okay? Conception is not the right translation ever. But the Vulgate used conception because it didn't understand the verse. The night comes after the day. So it's not talking about conception. You don't get born and then go back into the womb. Moreover, you don't know the moment of conception. So there can't be anything said about it when the conception occurs. You don't know when it occurs. At best, you're going to know a month or two later that, okay, I'm pregnant now. Exactly at what moment did you conceive? Well, if you're married to a guy and you guys are having sex often, you don't know which act of sex produced that pregnancy. You got that? Conception is before birth. But this is stated second. So it's not talking about conception. It's talking about the labor pains that produced the birth that day. And this is the nighttime celebration of it. And your next big hint that yes, this is true, what I'm telling you, is because they know it's a boy. They couldn't know it's a boy until it was born. So all these people using the word conceived are using the Latin. Okay, right here. Here's the Latin. Up here. Concept, conceptus. They're following the Latin. They are not following the real word of God. They're following the Latin translation that's based on a politicization of Mary's immaculate, you know, immaculate conception. This is where they invented it. So they mistranslate the Bible in order to advance the false notion of Mary being immaculate. Now, that's a con you know a condemnation of the Catholic Church. Well, the Catholic Church didn't actually exist till the 300s, and this is like from 200 A.D. This translation. But the Catholic Church has never, ever, ever called abortion murder. That is, the idea of abortion being murder was invented by Jerry Falwell and his disgusting, ugly, horrible, hating God. Other teachers who want to politicize Christianity so they can win political power in the White House, and that started in 1960. It had never been, even in the Catholic Church, it had never been a claim that abortion is murder. Because once you say abortion is murder, then you have to ask yourself, well, then is God a murderer? Because spontaneous abortions occur every day by the thousands. There are all kinds of pregnant women every day who have miscarriages. A miscarriage is called a spontaneous abortion in medical terminology. Does it matter if the abortion is on purpose or it happens because it happens on its own? It's still murder then because God is the one responsible for it happening. He can make sure it comes forth to term. So is God a murderer? Of course not. So the Catholic Church has never said abortion is murder. They don't recommend it. And neither does the Bible. You don't know what God's choice is. 
You want to bring it to term and let God choose whether or not it aborts. And that's the kind of counseling the pro-life um, people ought to be giving. But Caesar has no right over that because it's God's choice. You are interfering with the relationship between the human and God about this thing. If you try to give it to Caesar to say when life begins. You are in deep duty with God because you're interfering with God's choice in the matter. It is a spiritual question between the human and God. You are violating the Constitution and one day somebody will be smart enough to say, Oh, we should overturn Roe versus Wade, alright, because no ruling on abortion is allowable to the state. Because that violates the separation of church and state. It is a faith matter between the individual and whatever his beliefs are about God. So concept, conceptus was an invention to make Mary immaculate. And everybody who uses it is catering to that, not to the Hebrew. Because very clearly, you can't know it's a boy until it's born. And the night, Halela, follows the day, Yom, and the day on which I was born, all the translations recognize, Paris the day on which I was to be born. Really was, not was to be. This, this is, they're, they're playing with this. It doesn't say was to be. It says was. See? Yobad, Yom. See? It's nifal and perfect. It's talking about an action that happened in the past. Okay? He's going back to the day he was born. It was happening that day. So you can call it sort of like a dramatic and perfect. Let that day perish. Now he's already born and he's talking about the day he was born in the past. All right? And the night that follows the day that said, brought forth a boy. So it cannot mean conceived because it's after the birth and they know it's a boy. So when somebody comes up to you and tries to say you're pro-abortion because you're not, you're not pro, they're aborting the word of God, point out this verse. Because they'll think this verse supports them. And show them the Latin or give them this video. Because see, the only place it says conceived is in the Latin. Not in the Hebrew. Clearly not. Because the sequence is day first, night next, and they know it's a boy. So it can't be in the womb. They didn't have ultrasound. The only way they could know it was a boy is if it was born. And that night... After the birth in the day, they are celebrating bearing, the bearing. See, hara means to bear. They celebrate the bearing of a boy. So it's born, not conceived. You're not conceived after you're born. Conceiving of the gospel doesn't save you. Christ said, be born again, not conceived again. And if they don't understand that after you show them this, or after you explain it to them, you know, night follows day, and they're talking about a boy, so therefore it cannot mean conceived. If they don't get that, then they're already under divine discipline. 1 John 5, 16 awaits them capital punishment from God directly. You can't do anything. You can't even pray for them. Go read 1 John 5. You can't even pray for these people. They're so far in doo-doo with God. But you have done your due diligence to point it out. That's all you can do. All you can do is show scripture. And people have the right to accept it or reject it. And the pro-lifers will keep on rejecting it because they drool over Caesar and they hate Christ. Christ said my kingdom is not of this world so you shouldn't even be politicking. But they hate him. And starting with Jerry Falwell Sr. in 1960, a whole bunch of those stupid lying so-called pastors got together, Pat Robertson, Oral Roberts, the guy at Coral Ridge, all of them, they started hanging around together, making a political issue of a fetus. Your conscience, your sense of right and wrong has to be completely wrecked 
for you to politicize a fetus. And that's what they're doing. Because God means nothing to them. And now they got their boy Trump in power and their rottenness shows so thoroughly that God is taking them all out on the sin and the death. You watch and see. This is the time of God's judgment. The Matthew 24 video starting at the 42nd video shows that. Christ predicted all of this that I'm telling you. I didn't know he had predicted it. Somebody else found it. And in February I started doing videos on it. So go look at the Matthew 24 playlist. Here you got the pro-life blasphemy playlist. You can give it to people if you want. They probably won't watch it. They probably won't listen. But you will know you did your own due diligence before God and before them. And then you walk away. Because they're too far gone. If you can't figure out from just reading this verse, even in translation, that conceived does not follow born, but night follows day, if you can't figure out that this is wrong, even in translation, especially when many of the translations are saying man-child, they wouldn't say boy is conceived. It's a boy born. You can't know it's a boy in those days at conception. You don't even know when conception occurs. So you see, they're lying in their translations. Man-child brought forth, that's okay. Brought forth, birth. Child is a boy. Obviously, that means birth. Not conceived. See, a boy is born. Boy is born. So all those saying conceived, they're liars. Liars. Using the Latin, which invented the idea of conception being life, so they could justify Mary Immaculate. Liars! Just as night follows day, so too, after birth, you're still talking about birth. I'm sorry. Peace out.